Today we proceed with our SQL tutorials and we are looking at topic number three where we are going to advance from where we left off last time. So uh, for my SQL I've been using um, WAMP server. I installed WAMP server on my computer system and it's been able to give me all these. So uh, if I need to write SQL statements I basically just come to MySQL and then select uh, MySQL console. Let's load it up. No password. Okay, uh, last time we were using a table, or we can say show database, show databases, yeah, I think it was here, it's cool, so we can say use, school, okay, there we are. Now what we can do. Uh, I want us to add another table so that at least we can use that table to be able to demonstrate how you can be able to uh, select uh, data from two different tables and have it displayed on the screen. I uh, will write the SQL statement for that and also we might want to ensure that there is a relationship between that table and the new table that we're going to create. So we, we already have, uh, let's check the table that we have show tables yeah we have one table and that is students table now uh, let's first describe this table describe students okay it is those are the fields that we have so the primary key is the registration number and therefore that's what we are going to work with. But another thing, uh, when you're working with uh, MySQL console, uh, there are people who do not prefer to work with MySQL console and I've noted that even for the videos, the statements that we are typing are not that clear. So we might want to switch to PHP. Yeah, PHP my admin. So basically just come to the tray and then select PHP my admin. Give us a graphical in interface which might be much more interesting to work with. Okay, so here we are. You can see the name of our database in there. Click on it. So here uh, we have our table here, the same table we have seen in MySQL console. So it's the same table that we have in here. Uh, you can click that drop down and you'll be able to see the columns that you're having. There they are. That is our, our attributes of that particular table. So uh, we can click over here and you're able to do coding on this particular section rather than write your SQL codes on MySQL console. Uh, let me see, yeah, there it is. Okay, one thing I'd like to mention is that, you see, our table, if you look at it from here, it tells us the type is my isom, and my isom is a database storage engine, and this database storage engine does not work well with transactions, and therefore, since we're going to be creating foreign keys, that is, we're going to create a foreign key for the new table that we're going to work with to demonstrate how it can be linked with the student's table. So we might want to change from this uh, database engine. And therefore, to change that, uh, we, can we can maybe change it from the console. Uh, to change, we basically just say alter. We want to change it to inodb alter tab table and then the name of our table is students so we're going to alter what we're going to alter the engine and ensure the engine is inodb it is more suited for transactions there Hope it has changed. Let's confirm from the other side. Let's reload it again. 
Yeah, I can see there's a change inode B there. So it's inode B now. So what we're going to do is that we're going to create a new table. And say we are going to use SQL that we have and uh, PHP admin because it's much more clearer for us to type here even for the video to do the recording and you're able to see the code much more clearer. So what we have done here is that we are creating a table uh, named hostel and within it we have three attributes. We have room number, we have hostel name and then we have their registration number. So we set the room number to be tiny, not null, is auto increment and it is the primary key. So you can set the primary key uh, when you at, at this part rather than doing it at the end here. Now. That means that we are not going to be entering room number. It's going to be auto incrementing itself. Now, I don't think that even that is the right strategy for us to do because room number, hmm, what if the student uh, comes again for another semester? It will keep on incrementing. Okay, what we can do is this, just set, Let's call it HID. Let's just have an ID. Yeah, let's just have an hostel ID there. And then we say it not now. Okay. So this is not now. Not now. Okay. <clears throat> now, uh, the HID will be a unique identifier of that particular hostel table. You can just call it hostel booking. So that we don't confuse ourselves there. Hostel booking. Yeah, hostel booking would be better. Okay, now we are set for that line. Okay, so we have HID hostel name. Then if we have HID, then we do not, uh, we don't need the hostel name here. What maybe we can get is the hostel ID. So we have hostel ID. Hostel ID, we can say it not now not null and then give it vacha sorry i don't know why the keyboard is misbehaving vacha maybe 10 and then not nah okay so 
hostel booking table yeah that's better uh it has a uh, hid h it sounds weird okay let's change it to yeah that's better now so we have booking id hostel id we assuming the hostel id is a primary key in a hostel table somewhere and then we have our registration number uh, which we have set to Vacha and this registration number remember is our primary key in our student table then we are saying we're going to set an index to be able to recognize uh, this particular this particular enforcement that we are trying to come up with so we are going to set a constraints fk that is a foreign key hostel registration number we are able to note that registration number is a foreign key in hostel table I remember okay hostel booking hostel booking I don't know why my keyboard is misbehaving hostel booking yeah like that it's a constraint in hostel booking and then wage number so we don't forget what it is okay then we have we are saying the foreign key is the registration number and then we have set some references here so that we can we basically mean that uh, this registration number that we already have in this particular hostel booking table references registration number that we have in students table so the moment we make changes to that particular uh to register any any details and that in registration number in student table what will happen is that it will cascade that change to this particular table and then of course we cannot delete it from here because it's been used from from another different table and we have just to make sure we've set the engine to be uh this the database engine to be inodb because works best with transactions so that's it let's see what happens let me basically just click here and it's about to execute your sql there just executed it successfully so uh let's come to our hostel booking you can look at the structure of this particular table we have created and it shows us that we have booking id as primary key and it is auto increment and then it we also have our registration number is here. Uh, the registration number itself is also set to primary key. So uh, you need to make sure that the registration number you've set in this table has the exact settings as the one that you have in the in the student's table. Without that, then it will not work. So let's see if it's working. You can just come here and click there and then you insert yeah it tells us that it will work as you can see it's able to fetch for us the registration numbers that we currently have that is if you cannot remember then you'll be able to get the registration numbers from here so it has been set so you can if you do not wish to enter data through the console uh, you can just come and click insert and then remember booking id it's supposed to be auto increment therefore we're not going to enter data there and we have hostel id the assumption is that there's an id there's a hostel table somewhere and then here's a hostel id so if you're creating if you are doing some professional work you'd make sure also this one references to another uh, table that we probably would be calling it hostel id but since we're just doing a demonstration here we're going to enter any data we so wish there and then for registration number since it now references the student i student table uh it will not allow us to enter any data instead it will select the data that is currently available from student table and we are able to select from that let's try to add another record okay there 
Now you see the SQL statement that has been new, has been generated to assist us to enter this data. Here it is. Now this is the same uh, SQL statement. Would we'll write you have to write on the other side of the uh, MySQL console, but you can also execute it right here. You can write that statement here, and it will also be able to work. Let's see how that can work. Let's see, we have that. Maybe we have hostel ID maybe 22 and then we have let's assume we have a student by that name by that registration number and 14 so if these uh, registration numbers we are trying to enter straight up from the SQL do not exist then it will give us an error so let's try and run it they see we get an error because the registration numbers we are trying to register here do not exist in student table so that's why i was saying it's very good for us to uh, work with work with the the graphical use, user interface side now now you can see we only have 10 11 12 13 yeah only that that's all we have so let's try to enter data again in hostel booking. Uh, maybe hostel ID 14 and then we can select that student and then again and we can have another student. And then once we execute the statements once we execute that, it ought to click again. There. So the data has been entered into hostel booking. Let's look at it. There is the data. So all these students have been booked into rooms. Okay, now. Now, the purpose of creating another table was for us to demonstrate how you can be able to access, uh, to select data from two different tables. Now, let's try and select, uh, so in students, we have registration number, okay, and then hostel. That is what we have. We have booking ID, hostel, and registration number, okay. So, we're going to select the registration number from this particular table and then uh, we are also going to also want to see their names as we select from hostel booking we might we would also want to see their names So what we're going to do is we're going to write a SQL statement that will allow to find out the students who are uh, registered for hostel, who have booked hostel. But if you look at this hostel table, it basically just have the registration number, student ID, and booking ID. But we want to be able to get this registration number and at the same time get the first name or get the student name. What do we have in student name? We have, yeah, we have student table, we have student name. We can also get the uh, the agenda and then we can, uh, let's just, let's just begin by getting the student name and then the course code from that table. So we will be selecting from hostel booking table and student booking and student table.
So we have our SQL statement there. What we are basically saying is select registration number. Remember this registration number is coming from the hostel booking. Then we have student uh, name and then course code. So it looks okay the way it is, but we it's not really okay. So what we can do is create aliases. We say hostel uh, booking is represented by H and then we can use S for students so that here we can now come and say where the registration number in student table would be equal to the registration number in in that hostel booking now that's an alias we have created S represents students table and H represents hostel booking so the same applies here we need to do that so that is h this coming from student table and this also coming from student table yeah now when we have it like that we can be able to execute now you see we are selecting from hostel booking and then we've put a comma there before giving it an alias then we have done the same for students so let's execute and see what happens that's our SQL statement there see it shows us that we have these students registered in hostel they've booked hostel and these are their names and these are the courses that they are taking so that's how you can be able to select from different tables I mean yeah select data using one single SQL statement and select from uh, more than one tables Okay, looking at student table, you can see we have an entry here that has a registration number that does not actually match other entries. The other entries begin with SEU and then we have a digit there. Now here what we have is just 32. So how can we make this change? We can make this change by using the keyword or update the update statement in SQL. Maybe we want to set it to be SEU maybe 44, SEU 44. So since it is a voucher, we make sure we obey that. We must put those quotes there. So update the table we update in students, then set the column we want to set is registration number. We want to set it to SEU, SEU 44. But which one exactly? Where? Where what? Where range number is equals to so we use quotes and then a 32. So let's execute that statement and see how it goes there. Okay, let's look at it. Yeah, there it has been changed. There you see we've made the change. So it's as little as it's as simple as that and you can even go ahead and change the student name because the student name it also looks very funny. Let's do it again. Yeah, we have changed the name now. Now you want to change the name. This statement will help us change the name. The name is something that's not close to a name, but now we want to change the name to John Doe, where registration number is SEU44. Remember, we changed the registration number from 32 to SEU44. So let's execute it and see what happens. Okay, it has been accepted. Uh, we have the change with John Doe. Yeah it is changes occurred so it's as li as simple as that now perhaps also maybe you wanted to delete that particular record how do we go about it if you wanted to delete that record uh, is basically a matter of just saying delete delete from You must say where. 
so you don't delete all the records where range number you can say is equals to now you remember we changed the reg registration number it's SCU 44 yeah delete from this particular table where registration number is SCU 44 let's execute and see what happens there the record has disappeared it's no longer there so it's as simple as that okay another thing now if you are in php my admin and you wanted uh, the code for your for your database all basically just need to do select your database and then come to export when you click export you are able to get a dump of your database see uh, the, remember the name of our database is school and therefore you can select the format in which you want that dump to be uh, do you want it as sql statement do you want it as text and all that let's just select sql the moment we click export there it is let's open and see what is in it so there it is. Uh, I had installed VS Code in my computer, and it has been able. To, it was it was selected for application for opening, and basically this is what we have. You can see these basically all the SQL statements that we wrote, and uh, it has actually been rearranged to a point whereby if we have we have one to insert the database, I mean the data into the database, we have another one to create to create the table students it's there and then the data that goes hand in hand with that table and then what else do we have now you'll notice one thing uh, we created a table you were able to set the foreign key as registration number is a foreign key to table students but in the code that we've been given is not there so what my admin did was to separate that and now you can see the code is here it has been set on its own it has been separated from the original code statements for creating the table so if you want to we can transfer this to another computer by just running this dump we need just basically to come and say come back here and say import if you say import you're able to click here browse and then you're able to pick that file wherever you have stored it and then you can have the whole database uh, statements executed and you have your database in your computer again as simple as that